Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to be watching Iron Man 2 Part 2 to see how accurate the engineering scenes in the movie really are. I highly recommend, if you haven't already, to watch Part 1 so you get full coverage of the whole movie and all the scenes and discussion that we have in the comments and that I talk about in the commentary. Okay, with that, let's get started. Iran. No grave immediate threat here. Is that Justin Hammer? How did Hammer get in the game? Justin, you're on TV. Focus up. Okay, give me a left switch. Left, go to the right. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Wow. Yeah, I'd say uh, most countries five, ten years away. Hammer Industries 20. I'd like to point out that that test pilot survived. I think we're done is the point that he's... According to Moore's Law, the computing power of our computers in 10 years will be 10 times what they are right now. 10 years ago, the iPhone 3G came out. And right now, if anyone's walking around with that, it looks like a complete joke. Like, it doesn't stand a chance compared to the iPhones or just any smartphone that are coming out today. And it was very difficult to imagine 10 years ago where we would be right now. So it's even harder to say in 10 years where we will be, I mean, with anything, like with technology especially. But when it comes to competing tech companies when they're going up against each other like this and they're working towards a similar product, if one company gains a technological edge over the other, it's not gonna be like, okay, I guess they won, like time to call it quits. All the other companies around you are gonna figure out how you got the advantage, why your product is now better than theirs, and they're gonna keep on innovating until they catch up to you and surpass you. Come on! This Iron Man suit must be extremely lightweight because earlier we see Happy just walking around with it casually like there's nothing in it, right? Like he literally just carrying it with one hand like it's super light and then Pepper can easily just like pick it up and like toss it out the car like so what we know is like when Tony actually puts on the suit from the briefcase, it's not losing any mass, right? Like it's not getting heavier or lighter. It's the same mass the whole way through. There's no practical use for that in our technology today so that's why this looks really cool and i believe you can do this but just as an iron man armor it would be far weaker because of all the open air holes and it would just be a combination of many loose parts and open parts and if one thing goes wrong here it, i can only imagine a cascading effect and like i feel like this is just so much riskier for tony stark to use the advantage here would be that it is probably far more flexible because there's so many more openings and air holes for it to go through. When it comes to wire harnesses and how the power will travel throughout the suit, that's still the exact same, right? I mean, the arc reactor is still like inside of his body at this point. So the suit doesn't actually have to run on its own power. Like when it's actually like moving around him like that, it doesn't take much energy for it to connect to his arc reactor, then just use, it, powers, it powers the suit to actually expand out that way. Jarvis, could you kindly vacuum form a digital wireframe? I need a manipulable projection. Nineteen seventy-four stock Expo model scan complete, sir. What does that look like to you, Jarvis? Not unlike an atom. In which case, the nucleus. We'll be here. Highlight the Unisphere. The, the key thing here is that Tony specifically tells Jarvis he needs a manipulatable projection. I hope I said that right. But he wants to be able to manipulate the hologram which is pretty much being created here by Jarvis. Now fundamentally, you can't do that. A hologram, are, a hologram is formed when multiple rays of light are reflecting off of a film and they will create a projection. But you can't 
interact with it because it's all like pre-recorded same way it's like you can't yell at a movie on a screen and it'll change the plot right it's like everything is already like pre-done i don't believe that any technology exists today where you can like actively interact with any sort of hologram or projection because it just it fundamentally goes against the definition of what we have as a hologram so tony definitely had some new technology that is not available to us yet but the other thing too is again like there's no need for a product like this like I, I can't see anyone practically using this for any purpose even in a research lab like it, it's much easier instead of just dragging home like all those like four pieces of like uh, structures and then assembling them in your house and then creating a digital wireframe and then making a hologram out of it all you would need is like a picture of it or just whatever blueprint was made to create all those images and I mean, there's no reason for even a researcher to be using a hologram like this to um, interact or test with whatever he's doing. Microsoft has some pretty cool stuff called the Xbox Connect, and how that works is that you are interacting with a sensor. The only problem with that in respect to what we just saw here is that Tony is like moving around constantly, right? With an Xbox Connect, you can't do that. You have to remain within the sensor's grid lines. It is very possible that Tony could have set up multiple of these sensors all around his lab, and that allows him to move around really anywhere he wants to go, and he can interact with these projections. Well, it wouldn't be a projection if you can interact with it. Um, interact with, like, whatever that is. Like, it's not a hologram because you can't interact. It's not a projection because... He is moving around with it, so I don't really know what to call that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that you? No, that's, I'm not doing that. That's not me. I can't move. I'm, I'm locked up. I'm locked up. Get out of here. Go. This whole system's been compromised. Let's take it outside. Am I wearing the same glasses as Justin Hammer right now? I suspect that Whiplash is able to remote control Rhodey's suit because when Hammer uh, got the suit from the military, he he probably just removed whatever software Tony had on it and then put onto his own. That way he can easier control and manipulate the whole functions of the suit and add on what he wanted to and take away what he wanted to. In any sort of electronic device, you have hardware and you have software. The physical metal or the iron of the Iron Man suit is all hardware, right? Like. There's nothing there for you to really like mess with. Um, when it comes to the software, however, that's the second part of it. This is where you can pretty much do whatever you want. And I believe what Justin Hammer did was he removed Jarvis and he put on his own software and Whiplash is just using what had already been created to take over Rhodey's suit. I mean, somewhere you can use this today is, um, like, you can take away the iOS from an iPhone and then use Android software on it. I, I don't know why you would, but it, it, everything is there for you to physically be able to do so. Like the same way that you can run Windows on a Mac, you know, and uh, you can even have the Mac iOS in installed and downloaded onto a PC. Because these are just pieces of hardware. You're putting the software independently of whatever hardware there is. Break in. I need to own him. Yes. Tony, Tony, I'm locked on. I have target locked. On what? On you! What's going on? What's happening? The software's been overwritten. What? What do you mean it's been overwritten? I Does think that he mean? slaved the drones. That's impossible. Call the guards. All the phones are down, sir. Well, then call their, call their cells. The cell phones are not working either, what? sir. He's locked That's us out of the mainframe. Who's that? Guy? What's happening here is Whiplash is actually taking over Hammer's computers and he said that he has overridden the software that currently exists. If you work for a corporation or for a company, you are not going to be able to do that because they won't allow you to. But if you're doing independent research, no one's stopping you. You can make your own programs, you can invent anything new you want to get the data points that are the most precise. There are some disadvantages to creating a new software and not using what already exists. For example, if you want to troubleshoot, you can't <laughs> because if you created it only you know the ins and outs of it you have to explain how it works and go through a whole long laundry list of 
why it doesn't work before anything can actually get done. In this situation, when you have someone who is just that good at software engineering and computer programming that he created his own layer of new programs and a new software on top of what already exists in a corporation, yeah, you can create it such that someone else trying to understand whatever you created, it takes them a long time because they didn't make it, right? Only you know the ins and outs of it. Almost all computer scientists and programmers, they don't just have a blank screen when they begin. Like normally that you start off with like pseudocode or an idea, or if you actually are in trying to improve something, you don't just erase all the code you had before and rewrite most of it. You take what already exists and then you make slight improvements and then you'll try to reduce some of the memory required so you can use that in other parts of your device. I think I covered majority of what were in the comments and things that people wanted me to commentate more and discuss in deeper length. The way that I choose which scenes I include in these sort of videos is just whatever I find most interesting. Um, these movies are pretty long and there's a lot going on in them, so I will continue to miss certain scenes that other people would like to talk about, but keep putting them in the comments and I will keep making more videos and I'll give the best explanation I can to whatever it is that you guys want me to talk about. Thanks again everyone, stay fresh, stay golden.